Okay, good evening ladies and gentlemen and a warm welcome to those attending and also to our viewers watching live on the Council's YouTube channel, Healing in London. This is a meeting of the Residents Education and Environmental Services Policy Overview Committee. My name is Councillor Wayne Bridges and I'm the chairman of this meeting. The key role of this committee is to monitor the performance of local public services within its remit and to hold in-depth reviews on topics of resident interest. We engage with a range of external witnesses in our activity, which can include community groups, residents and subject matter experts. Where we identify areas for change or improvement, we make recommendations to the decision-making cabinet. Details of the business to be considered today is shown on the agenda, copies of which are available in the room and also accessible on the YouTube underneath the broadcast. For those present in the room and intending to speak, please note that you will be filmed and any statements you make will be recorded and made public. And for those in the public gallery, you will not be on the camera. A reminder to councillors, officers and those speaking today that you should turn your microphone button on when speaking. This will ensure you can be heard in the room and by those watching online. So going around the table tonight, I will introduce the people present. On my right is Councillor Steve Tuckwell, Councillor McWarner, Councillor Radio, Councillor Rodriguez, Councillor Kaufman. To my left is Councillor Jan Sweeting, the Labour lead, and Councillor Stuart Mavis. And I also have present Neil Fraser, Democratic Services Officer. Before we go on to the main agenda, uh, some quick housekeeping. So we're not expecting a fire alarm this evening. However, if the fire alarm goes off, please follow officers to the fire exits and out of the building to the designated meeting point, which is the Civic Centre forecourt. For those in the room, please switch off any mobile devices before the meeting starts or put them on silent. And please note that some councillors may be using tablets or laptops to view the agenda. If we do have residents' feedback, you can um, give those available here in the room, or there is also a version online under the broadcast. With that said, we start with apologies for absence, please. Thank you, Chairman. Apologies have been received from Councillors Markham and Tony Little. Thank you very much. Item 2, any declaration of interest coming before this meeting? No. Uh, item 3, I can confirm that all business uh, this evening will be discussed in Part 1. And we move on to item four, which is to agree the minutes of the previous meeting. Is that agreed? Councillor Sweeting, you indicated. Thank you, Chairman. Um, there's a couple of points. Um, thank you for having early, for me having early notice of the of the minutes. But unfortunately, as you can see from my voice, I was otherwise um, not well. Um, a couple of points I would make is I was surprised at my comment concerning the percentage of monies that were allocated to the repair of pavements in the various um, areas of the borough were, had not been noted. There was, as you remember, me saying about the 85% to 15% split um, between the north and the south of the borough, and that's not mentioned in the minutes, although the issue is um, mentioned in respect of the, the problems that we have in the south of the borough. That's one thing. And secondly, if I may uh, go on, um, it does give the impression that we all had agreed on the recycling and fly tipping uh, major review. You may remember that we did put forward quite a few um, recommendations for that, and I don't think we made a decision that it would be the recycling review that would actually come forward. Which page are you referring to, Councillor? Sorry. Um, excuse me, it's page seven. Um, it was suggested that a new review topic could be recycling, fly tipping and charity waste. Um, so that seemed to be the main one that we were recommending. It, so the minutes show that, that that was a suggestion, but it's not actually agreed as such. It's not agreed. It's just Although we have a, a scoping, a, an early scoping report so suggesting so that, that. That's not a scoping report. So. The minutes show that, that there was a, uh, a discussion on potential topics. That was one of the potential topics uh, listed. The, inf the information item tonight is just that, an information item to present uh, the topic of fly tipping and recycling, I'm sorry, littering, to the committee for consideration as the next major review. Thank you, Councillor Sweeting. Um, and for the record, that's been noted uh, in regards to Councillor Sweeting's previous comments at the last meeting in regards to resurfacing. Councillor Mavers. Good evening. Um, I would like it to be noted, if possible, that within the discussion we had around youth services not being able to be viewed, that when we discussed it 
the previous meeting, and I reflected again last meeting, that it wasn't just about the youth service itself. It was also around youth engagement in consultations, um, early intervention and prevention services for young people. So it's a broader um, suggestion around young people, which would be helpful to be added to the list if possible. Thank you. Okay. With that said, can we agree the minutes? Agreed. Thank you. Apologies. There's also the minutes from the um, full council. Can we agree those as well, please? Thank you. Item five is our air quality briefing notes. Uh, members will note that there's no officers present here this evening, uh, and the item is for noting. However, if there are any questions or comments that members wish to make, then we will, of course, pass them to the clerk present, who will liaise with the officers outside of the meeting. So are there any comments or questions before I begin? Yeah, Councillor Tucker? Yeah, uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, just in, in reading through the, um, the, the, the notes that we've got in front of us, there was a couple of things that stood out for me. And one was <coughs> in relation, I think it's page 12, the council priorities in terms of leading by example. Um, I'd be really interested to know um, how many vehicles the council does operate and what progress has been made so far to reduce vehicle emissions. Um, as, as certainly it indicates that that is the plan. Um, leading on from that, it's really to sort of see, uh, to, to get some answers around what the next steps would be uh, for any replacement vehicles that are that are in in, in progress, um, and how long it would take to you know get the, the entire fleet into a place where we can be satisfied with the emissions, um, and following on from that really was to just uh, how the council is promoting the use of green fleets for its subcontractors and partners as well. So those are the sort of points that that stood mm -hmm. out for me. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Tuckwell. Councillor Sweeten. Um, I'd like to ask about the issue of um, planning applications. Um, I know that the council has rules and regulations on what they can and can't agree at, at applications, but what seems to have been coming up quite recently is there are many applications for particularly residential property that are in areas where the air quality is above legal limits already, and the council has really been forced by planning rules and regulations to agree these. The only way they can be agreed is that the air in these buildings has got to be mechanically scrubbed. So you cannot open windows because the air pollution outside is such that you would be beyond legal limits. And I would urge this committee, if possible, to find some way that we can, as a planning um, authority, change our planning rules so that we can deny planning applications uh, ap approval <coughs> for these, these areas. Because I know my colleague, Councillor um, Janet Duncan, speaks about this at every planning meeting, but we seem to be getting nowhere. There is, of course, the pressure on, on um, housing, um, and we do need more housing. We recognise all of that. But really, to build houses in areas where the air quality is not fit for human use is something that we really, as a council, surely must be looking at much more closely so that we can beef up uh, uh, the ability for us to say no to these developments. Thank you, Councillor Sweeting. Councillor McQuarrie. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm just focusing on uh, improving air quality around schools. Um, I know that the council have a decent budget for planting trees, and sometimes it's not always suitable to plant trees near uh, people's homes. However, a large number of schools have sufficient land, and I'd like to know if we as a council support schools um, by encouraging them to plant trees on these sites. Um, I also want to know um, what's the most common type of tree uh, that we plant, and as it, is it inf effective in terms of improving air quality as well, please? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McMahon. Councillor Mavers. Thank you, Chair. Um, it, it, it's disappointing there isn't an officer here to, to talk these questions through with, but mine again um, focuses on, on schools. Uh, it would be useful for this committee to have a list of those schools that are in areas where the legal limit is breached around air quality or areas that are particularly um, of concern. I think all members across the council um, are 
really concerned about uh, our children growing up or even being educated in areas of poor air quality. Um, but not just that, what, what, where are in proximity to these um, areas of concern are the monitoring stations? Are we proactively putting them in school areas? Um, I, through different um, conversations with uh, residents and others who are interested in this area, they often talk about them being placed too high up. So instead of it being air monitoring at, at head height, it's at the top of a roof height, which may give a, give a different reading. And it's that street level analysis around schools that uh, I'd be useful to know kind of what the plans are to get more information, more data, but also how we're targeting those worst areas of schools uh, in bad air quality areas. Thank you, Councillor Mavis. Um, Councillor Calton. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, going back to Councillor Sweeting's remarks concerning um, planning systems, on page 13, um, there is a paragraph 2 that um, the Council will use its planning policies to sh ensure new developments incorporate air quality positive design measures. So, um, have we not sort of, you know, said that, well, that's what we're going to do, that's our recommendations? Yes, but unfortunately, because there's a way of mitigating in planning applications, if the, um, if the applicant can say they're going to mitigate uh, um, concerning the poor air quality by using this scrubbing of air systems, then that, that mitigation um, uh, level is, uh, is able to be uh, considered as part of the planning application, and then it is approved. Um, what my colleague Councillor Duncan has said time and time again, and she actually um, refuses to vote in favour of any of these developments that go into areas of high, uh, poor air quality, is that um, it's for the council to look again and to see whether they can, and I'll use the phrase, beef up um, their, their policies so that they're not forced, we're not forced as a council to agree that the mitigation that these uh, developers are, say, are using is sufficient. We need to say, well, no, it isn't because, you know, people, we're all human beings, we need to open windows if possible, and as soon as the door is open, are we letting in all of this poisonous air? Thank you, and I also remind you, Councillor Kaufman, that questions come through the chair and not directly to your opposite members. Sorry. Thank you. Councillor Radio. Thank you, Chairman. Um, it was, I must admit, my first time reading this report in preparation for this meeting. And um, from, from, from my viewpoint, it does look as though that the Council has got the, the right intentions on this. I wanted to make a couple of points about data. Um, we know that there are 11 monitoring sites at various points in the borough, but I couldn't help but notice that there's a glaring absence of the actual data from these specific points. It would be good to know where these stations are and their readings at various points in time so we can see how the trends are changing at, across different parts uh, of the borough. Um, and sticking on the, on the point of data, figure six is presented as uh, showing a reduction in overall nitrous, nitrous dioxide concentrations. Uh, do the officers know whether this reduction is statistically significant? Because it, I, I appreciate that you know you can make you can manipulate the appearance of a line by the scale, but um, it, it would be good to know if this reduction is more than just due to random error. Thank you, Councillor Radio. Are there any other points, Councillor McQuarrie? Thank you, Chairman. Um, also thinking about uh, travelling to school, um, and I was just thinking about the Council's cycle um, training schemes that we have. Um, how often are the lessons held, and uh, is it given full coverage across the borough? It would be interesting to know. And does it integrate with schools in terms of do they encourage cycling to school? Perhaps that's a way of tackling this issue of cars on the road. Thank you very much, Councillor Sweeten. Um, I'm looking at, uh, again, page 13, and um, the Council will develop a rolling programme of awareness and enforcement campaigns, and they mention something called air text. Now, I must admit that um, I don't know what this the system, uh, where this system can be found, what information is being given to residents, 
I, I've not seen it on Hillingdon people, for example. I may well be not reading the small print, but it would be good if we have this system and it is there to alert residents of you know, potential real problems in their area. Um, you know, we need to get this information out. Thank you, Councillor Sweetin. Um, I did read it in the actual report, so it did reference to uh, the text alerts. I believe it just alerts you when the pollution's high in that specific area. Um, if we can get the officers to send a link on that for members' information, I think that would be helpful. Councillor Tuckwell. Yeah, thank you, Mr Chairman. Just in response to, to Councillor Sweetin, I signed up for it today um, as in preparation. So it's on the Council website. If you just put in the search... Um, so put in the search bar air text then you, you've got all the login details but through you chair yes we might be able to do that because we you know but we need to get this information out you know in literature form as well as IT form if you like because this is something that I'm sure people will be very keen to have knowledge of okay thank you very much I believe that's all the members wishing to ask questions and comments um, Neil, you've got. particular reference to what they'd like to be included in the report for the next, when it comes back in March. When it comes back in March. Okay, so the, the report will be coming back in March next year. You've already mentioned questions earlier. Is there anything you would like to see come back next year in that report that we may not have already touched on this evening? Always some time. Councillor Sweeten, did you indicate? Well, just as um, Councillor colleague over there said, you know, we need to know specifics. We need to know data. We need to know the areas where we've got real problems, and you know, mitigation. What's been happening in those areas? On a personal, I'd also endorse <coughs> Councillor Navas' comments about the pollution outside schools. The report did show sort of heat sensitive maps, etc but it didn't give actual specific data for outside the schools, which is, of course, a priority in this report. Uh, so a heavy focus on the schools would be, I think, beneficial to us in, in guiding the Council of how we tackle air pollution outside schools going forward. Okay. Got all that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, so we now move on to item six, which is for consideration the littering and fly tipping review. Uh, which we've mentioned under the minutes, uh, and this basically asks the committee to consider the subject and determines whether these subjects should form the basis of the committee's next review. Uh, and at this point, I would invite comments or questions from members. Are there any? Councillor Tuckwell. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I, I think um, looking at the, the detail that's contained contained in here, uh, and I know this subject has been uh, reviewed uh, a few years back, but you know, in talking to residents that I talk to on a regular basis, you know, this is a hot topic um, of concern for them, and I think um, we can certainly, um, with the review, um, move forward with some quite exciting activities uh, and put some scrutiny into what the, uh, the waste service team and indeed the wider council is doing to ensure that we re you know, reduce and indeed eradicate what is a, a blight on our communities. Uh, so I, um, I welcome that uh, we move this forward and have it as our review for the year ahead. Thank you, Councillor Sweeten. Um, if we do go for this review, I'd like it to be widened to include waste services and civic amenity facilities because these are all very much connected. Um, my problem is, at the moment, that we have put in more money, the council has put in more money to monitor the fly-tipping instances. But what I've been seeing is when I have given the council actual information on the culprit, taken photographs, you know, speeded them to resident services, um, and with given dates and times, it still does not end up with that culprit being in any way um, brought to, to book um, with, with you know, a fine or, or, or even a stern letter. So um, if we go this, this way, we, we need to actually find what other authorities are doing to actually enable us in Healingdon to, to, to go out and, and, and establish who is doing this, this blight to our communities. And we're all seeing it. This, this is not really a north-south divide here, although I must admit there seems to be you know, a lot more problems in the south, but we all want to have our communities looking you know, smart and, and um, 
uh, and without the, the, the pollution, not only air pollution, but also litter pollution. Thank you, Councillor Sweetin. You make a very good point. And uh, as of page 19, it shows the current enforcement action and fines as one of the potential sort of terms of reference, which I think is a very important one, as you say. So, yes, uh, Councillor Vardia. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I apologise. I'm relatively new to this committee, but I would be interested to know what the alternatives are. Um, if, if we did not proceed with this review, what are the topics? are on the table or are under consideration, just to do a like-for-like -like comparison. Um, I also know that we introduced free bulky item collections, I believe, in May 2018. And I wonder whether it might... We all want to see fly tipping go away, but it might be an idea to wait a little bit to see how that policy plays out, to see whether it does actually have an effect on addressing the problem and may, may, maybe doing this at a later point, just an idea. Um, but if we do go ahead with it, um, I would also like, I, I also think it makes sense to include waste services as part of this, if, if the officers don't feel that it would make the, uh, the review far too broad. Thank you, Councillor Vardia. Um, I would refer you to the minutes of the previous meeting and the one before that, where we did discuss a number of topics. Um, the committee's first preference was youth services which was discussed and unfortunately we didn't progress that on the basis it was being looked at by officers at present under bid. Um, so the other items you see in the work program are also suggested by this committee and have been added in as um, information items. Uh, those could be other areas to explore, uh, but we also have to bear in mind the officer time spent in the background looking into these potential topics. Um, Councillor Mavis. Thank you, Chair. Um, I would be very interested in, in the kind of performance it, that, that we currently demonstrate um, around those persistent areas like the hotspots. Um, there are a number where we know that we may have the um, desire but not necessarily the resource to fulfil them. I know CCTV is often not the answer to everything but can be helpful in those persistent spots, uh, hotspots. And I, my concern is that we spend a lot of officer time with the same, not few areas because there's more than a few, but the same areas. And, and just the responses, if it's improved or not improved, if we're finding that there are less persistent areas because of certain interventions, a bit of an idea of the, of the current um, kind of, yeah, the, the current performance around those things and the response times. Um, I'm also aware that uh, in my own ward, there are some areas that are reported that may not be completely in the kind of um, line of sight to the majority of residents, but, but are persistent spots that really frustrate a, a small road, for example, a small street. And, and bring a, a real, um, as, as all flight team does, that kind of negative impact and, and takes away some of the local pride. Um, so if those things could be looked at, that would be really useful. Yeah, so thank, thanks for those ideas. I, I know there's, there might be some more discussion. Um, one of the ideas behind any potential review on this subject would also be not only looking at what the council here is doing, but also really availing yourself of, of what's, what's, what other local authorities are doing you know, learning of best practice, new initiatives, national national policies, and and uh, and things that are being done on that scale to really um, really address the problem here in Hillington. You sort of stole what I was about to say, Neil. Actually, um, that was the point I was going to make. Actually, um, especially given that Hillington collects their waste weekly and has a number of initiatives, it would be interesting to see how other councils compare who don't collect it quite as often. Councillor Kaufman. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I fully agree that uh, this particular review, uh, review, uh, topic will be a really good one. Our waste services do an excellent job. However, <clears throat> they can't be everywhere all the time. And therefore, I think we need initiatives within schools, within residence associations, and there is a willingness um, with local residents to actually get involved in this. Um, and certainly in my world, we have um, you know, a list of picker teams that go out once a month for an hour, and since January, we've picked up 215 kilos of street rubbish. So I think people do want to get involved. When they see our sort of high-vis volunteer jackets, what are you doing? Um, well, we're picking up litter. Oh, that's super. Can we get involved? Um, so I think there's lots of things around this topic that, that, that we could actually explore, explore. And there's also the sort of Keep Britain Tidy campaign. There's poster campaigns we could get involved with to highlight this thing. People do not like it, 
but they just walk past it. So I think we, we've got a, an awareness thing going on here. So I would fully support you, uh, you know, having this as a, a topic. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Are there any other members wishing to speak? Councillor Tuckwa? Yeah, just um, I, I'm getting a sense around the room from both sides that, that we, we want to just get on and get cracking and, you know, not lose any time um, where we've got, you know, some potential for some, um, you know, some, some scrutiny and for some new initiatives to be developed. So uh, I think we should just get on with it, really, and start the process as, uh, as quickly as possible. Thank you. Is that agreed? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, item 7 is the Cabinet Forward Plan. Are there any comments or questions on those listed? Councillor Sweetin. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm coming back to this issue of youth services. I am very concerned that um, there are going to be some major changes to youth services that will be explained to us as part of the budget and monitoring um, and budget planning for next year. And I would ask, therefore, when um, the Cabinet is likely to have the report on new services coming to them, and if it's possible whether the Chairman of this committee could ask for this committee to have sight before it goes to Cabinet. Um, we mentioned this some time ago, and the information that came back to us was that this would have to be agreed um, by the chairman discussing it with the cabinet member. Um, but um, I'm rather sensitive about this because although we are welcoming the council's development of um, community facilities in West Drayton, it is going to be on the site where there is currently a youth centre and it's a youth centre that's used by some very disparate groups and we are very wary um, and worried about what will happen to those, um, those groups that are functioning very well at the moment. So to have some sort of um, uh, the ability to have um, an, uh, an early look at what the Cabinet's proposals report will be would be very useful so that this committee could make the comments. Thank you, Councillor Sweetin. Um, I do recall you raising it at the previous meetings, and we have discussed this with Democratic Services. Um, and it is at the Cabinet Member's discretion whether to allow that information to be released early, but also we have to consider the fact whether we'd have it in time for publication. So perhaps we could liaise with it further outside between myself and the Labour lead, but and we can come back at a later date. Any other comments on the forward plan? In which case, we can note those. And item eight is our work program. As I mentioned earlier in the meeting, we did have a number of um, one-off business items uh, which are listed on page 29. Uh, but what I would like to do, if I can this evening, is just get a feel from the committee if there's anything on there that they wanted to specifically mention on those topics. Uh, in particular SEN, which I know you mentioned, Councillor Sweetin, if there's anything in particular under that, because it's quite a broad subject as to which way you want the committee to look on this. Councillor Sweetin. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, the information that I think we need is um, the count Council's plans for the increase of SEN capacity. Now, I know that there are plans for a new free school that will be a new special free school that's planned for the south of the borough. Um, I think a site has been actually identified for that, but it's all gone very, very quiet, and I don't know where we are with that. Um, there's also, um, I have been advised, that Grangewood in the north of the borough is going to be changed from being a secondary SLD school to an all-through SLD school. And maybe um, works to Meadow are, are being considered as well, because I know there is pressure on capacity at Meadow. So I would like the work programme to include information on the Council's plans for increasing this capacity because what mainstream schools are finding is that some children that have not got education, health and care plan or they're in the, in the process of having an education, health and care plan really do need 
support that, that is not really available at mainstream schools. And the problem then lies in where these youngsters that require education and need statutory right for education, where is going to be the correct provision for those? Now, uh, my, uh, my background is special ed. I, I've done quite a lot of work on special ed. So I'd be really interested, and I hope the committee would be, to where we are as a council in the provision of additional capacity, not only in our special schools, but in our mainstream schools as well. Neil? So, thank you, Chairman. So, can I, can I just, so I, so I can give a proper steer to the officer writing the report. Were you looking to focus more on how mainstream schools are coping and providing SEN services to those children as opposed to special schools, or was it an equal split on both? Or I mean, that, is, I think, is an issue all of its own, how um, schools that are, are faced with uh, a tightening of budgets, let's put it that way, um, are not being able to provide the one-to-one -one support that they were able to provide for special needs kids in our schools. That is one issue, a separate issue. But also, um, there is the issue of what capacity that we have got and we are planning for in Hillingdon, because we know that there are delays in education, health and care plans, and those youngsters that are in schools are not only not receiving an education for themselves, but are also having an impact on the education of other youngsters. So in fact, there's two issues here. What's happening in our mainstream schools in respect of education and health care uh, um, youngsters and send youngsters, but also what we as a council are doing in increasing capacity in our special schools and our mainstream schools that have got units so that those youngsters are able to have the education that they need and deserve. Thank you, Councillor Sweeting. Was that enough? Yes, that's okay. exactly Thank you. Can, can I just also ask, Chairman, um, yep. regarding the uh, emergency response procedures, was there any particular yep. so, that, that could be used to okay. So for those of you who didn't hear, uh, the clerks asked for further information on the emergency response procedures. Is there any more information that members wish to give on that in steering the, the uh, officers into uh, having this item discussed at a later date? I mean, in, in terms of specifics, I suppose Heathrow Airport, RF North Vault are obviously issues of concern. Uh, equally, with that comes uh, things like infectious diseases and that at the airport. We, I know we've had flights in and out of North Vault previously with people with you know, highly contagious diseases. So uh, what's our policy around that in making sure that it's robust and uh, you know, patients are being transported as safely as possible and uh, residents are protected? Councillor Tuckwell. Yeah, thank you, Mr Chairman. I think just in relation to that, and it's been quite topical for other parts of the United Kingdom in recent days, um, is, is sort of floods, flood defences. I think it would be useful to, to understand uh, how well we're prepared um, for that. Thank you very much, Councillor Mavis. Uh, yes, um, just on the, on that point, um, with the uh, local plan part two, is obviously looking at a, a more high density of, of housing in different areas, um, and we've had some fires in high rise, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, uh, a major incidents around fire, I saw one dealt with very well by all of those services in the council. Uh, it'd be useful to make sure that there is the right provisions in the right places where we're getting more dense housing. Um, so, I may then just talk about something else, Chair. Thank you. Um, it just uh, in our um, things to discuss for review, we've spoken a lot about um, uh, kind of creative provisions, um, cultural and heritage items, uh, and we haven't reflected any of that in some of the items we've chosen for one-off business. So, uh, if, if I could, I'd like to suggest that we look at the uh, a, a rep an information report, a one-off business item on uh, highlighting and promoting of cultural and heritage things similar to Black History Month. Um, we discuss the kind of diversity of our borough regularly and, and how we celebrate that. And if that could come as something to inform councillors and the public around what's on offer and what's being looked to in the future, that may also include the current youth offer um, for young people and how they're being engaged in cultural and um, other heritage activities. Thank you, Councillor Mavis. I think this was raised previously, um, partially due to the programme we've already got in place. It was difficult to put on but I believe that some officers had 
liaised with cabinet members and there might have been some concerns with that? Or? It was more about um, fitting onto the agenda and, and the appropriateness of, of coming to the, the, the committee, really, Chairman. My apologies. Um, any other members? Councillor Sweeten. Um, could I also look at the, the date that we're going to have the um, item on new services, which is not until February? Now, um, that will be done, really, when everything is dusted, if you like, after, after the budget. And if there's going to be any significant reductions in new services, um, it will be well and truly um, out by then. Um, it would be good to have the report on new services really much earlier than the February um, meeting. Thank you, Councillor Sweeten. Um, Neil, I believe you have liaison officers for each of these items, so it is also a matter of having their availability to come to the meeting, but if we could look at bringing that forward and maybe swapping it with another item and pushing it back, that'd be fine. Yeah. Councillor Tuckwell. Yeah, thank you, Mr Chairman. I'm just conscious that I'm looking at this A3 bit of paper and it's uh, getting mighty full already. Um, just, just a comment really around road safety around schools, and just wondering if there's an opportunity to maybe broaden that to, to other, top, other areas of road safety. No. Um, we did look into that, Chairman, um, Councillor. Um, obviously, from your previous suggestion at the previous meeting, um, it was felt that the uh, the topic was so broad that it, it would be served the committee better to focus on safety around schools in the first instance, and then potentially, following that, we could look into uh, opening up to other areas of the, the highway network. Thank you. Any other comments? No. Okay. We will note that then. Um, in which case, that concludes our business for this evening. Thank you very much for your attendance, and thank you to those attend, uh, watching on our YouTube channel. Good night. <laughs>